Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh To carry on with the head and neck lectures, I'm gonna cover in this presentation the anatomy of the mandible. I'm Dr. Dalia Saleh, professor and the head of anatomy department at Mansoura University, Egypt. The objectives of my presentation will be First, I will cover the general or pony features of the mandible and then special features of the mandible like muscles attached to it, joints related, the ligaments attached to the mandible and also the vessels and nerves related to it. The mandible is the largest and the strongest bone of the face. It articulates with the skull at the temporomandibular joint and it is the only movable joint of the skull. It consists of a horseshoe shaped body and a pair of rimae. The body of the mandible meets the ramus on each side at an angle. We call it simply the angle of the mandible. As we can see here, this is the horseshoe shaped body of the mandible. These are the two rimae and this is the angle of the mandible. If we look at the outer surface of the body of the mandible, we can see in the midline the junction between the two halves of the mandible, we call it the symphysis menti. Symphysis means joint and menti means chin. We can also see a foramen here, we call it the mental foramen, which lies below the second premolar tooth. From this foramen, the terminal branches of the inferior alveolar nerve and vessels exit and we call them the mental nerve and vessels. They supply the skin of the area of the chin. But if we look at uh, the body of the mandible from inside, we can see the following features. In the midline, the four mental spines, two superior and two inferior, they give origin to the right and left genioglossus muscles above and to the right and left genohyoid muscles below. Also, we can see the mylohyoid line or mylohyoid ridge that can be seen as an oblique ridge that runs backwards and laterally from the area of the mental spines to an area just below and behind the third molar tooth. Still, we can see two fossae or depressions. One is called the submandibular fossa, which lies below and posterior to the mylohyoid line where the submandibular gland lies and we can see also the sublingual fossa which lies above and anterior to the mylohyoid line. Above we have the alveolar margin which represents the upper border of the body of the mandible and the adult it contains 16 sockets for the roots of the teeth. At the lower border of the body of the mandible to the right and left of the midline, we have two depressions, we call them the digastric fossae. They give origin to the anterior belly of digastric muscles. If we look to the ramus from the outside, the ramus is vertically placed. It has anterior coronoid process and posterior condyloid process. We also can call it the head of the mandible. The two processes are separated from each other by a notch, we call it the mandibular notch. There is also an oblique line that extends from the anterior border of the ramus till the mental foramen. It gives attachment to the lower fibers of the buccinator muscle, which is one of the muscles of the face. If we look to the ramus from inside, we can see the mandibular foramen. It gives passage to the inferior alveolar nerve and vessels. It is guarded anteriorly by a projection of the bone. It's called lingula, which lies in front of the mandibular foramen. And it gives attachment to one of the ligaments of the mandible. We call it the sphenomandibular ligament. Just below the mandibular foramen, there is a groove for the passage of the nerve and vessels that will supply the mylohyoid muscle. So we call it a groove for mylohyoid nerve and vessels. We can also see the mylohyoid line or mylohyoid ridge that lies obliquely just below the three molars and it gives attachment for the mylohyoid muscle. For the muscles attached to the mandible, we have 
the pocsinator, which is one of the muscles of the face. We also have the insertion of the four muscles of mastication, the masseter on the outer surface of the ramus of the mandible, the medial pterygoid on the inner aspect of the ramus of the mandible at the angle, the temporalis muscle to the coronoid process, the lateral pterygoid muscle to a pterygoid fovea or a depression on the front of the condyloid process of the mandible. We also can see the mylohyoid muscle, which is related to the mylohyoid line or mylohyoid ridge below the three molars. Near the midline, we have the two genioglossus muscles, right and left, and below them lies the two genioglossus muscles. The four of them are attached to the mental spines. Below them lies the attachment of the anterior belly of digastric muscles at the digastric fossae. For the temporomandibular joint, it's formed by the articulation of the articular tubercle and the mandibular fossa of the temporal bone at the base of the skull, together with the head of the mandible or the condyloid process of the mandible below. The articular surfaces are covered with fibro cartilage. It is a synovial condyloid joint. Inside the joint, we have an articular disc that divides the cavity of the TMJ into upper and lower cavities. It is surrounded by a capsule that is attached above to the articular tubercle and the margins of the mandibular fossa and below to the neck of the mandible. This capsule is strengthened by ligaments. We have the lateral temporomandibular ligament which strengthens the lateral aspect of the capsule and its fibers run downwards and backwards from the tubercle on the root of the zygoma to the lateral surface of the neck of the mandible. This ligament limits the movement of the mandible in a posterior direction, thus protects the external auditory meatus. We also have the sphenomandibular ligament, which lies on the medial side of the joint, so it supports the joint medially. It is a thin band that is attached above to the spine of the sphenoid and below to the lingula of the mandibular foramen. We also have the stylomandibular ligament, which lies behind and medial to the joint. It extends from the apex of the styloid process to the angle of the mandible. The articular disc that I have mentioned uh, before, it divides the joint into upper and lower parts. It is attached circumferentially to the capsule of the TMJ. Its upper surface is concave or convex to fit into the shape of the articular tubercle and the mandibular fossa, while its lower surface is concave in shape to fit into the head of the mandible. This disc is attached anteriorly to the insertion of the lateral pterygoid muscle and posteriorly to the head of the mandible. The disc moves forward and backwards with the head of the mandible during protraction and retraction of the mandible. For the nerve supply of this joint, it is supplied by branches from the auriculotemporal nerve and the movement that takes place there is depression and elevation. This is depression and this is elevation of the mandible. Also, retraction, as in the normal position when your lower teeth lies behind your uh, upper teeth, as in closing uh, of your jaw. And the opposite of it is protraction. Also, this joint allows some rotation. Now, what are the arteries related to the mandible? We have the following arteries. The facial artery. The inferior alveolar artery which enters uh, the mandibular canal through the mandibular foramen to supply uh, the teeth of the lower jaw. We also have the termination of the inferior alveolar that exit through the mental foramen and it's called the mental artery. On the undersurface of the mylohyoid muscle, we have the artery to the mylohyoid. We also can see the termination of the external carotid artery behind um, the neck of the mandible and the maxillary artery related to the 
inner aspect of the neck of the mandible. Also, the mesetric arteries, which originates from the maxillary artery and reach the masseter muscle through passage over the mandibular notch. For the nerves related to the mandible, we have the following. The lingual nerve, which lies just below the third molar tooth and groove the bone there. The inferior alveolar nerve, which enters the mandibular canal through the mandibular foramen. The mental nerve which is the termination of the inferior alveolar nerve and is related to the mental foramen. The mylohyoid nerve, which lies below the inferior alveolar nerve deep to the mylohyoid muscle. The auriculotemporal nerve, which lies near the neck and head of the mandible. And nerve 2 masseter, which also pa passes above the mandibular notch to reach the mesetric muscle. This is the end of my presentation. Thanks for listening. If you like it, please do not forget to subscribe, like, and share. And do not forget to hit the notification bell so you know if I upload another video.